Welcome back to Play with the Pros, Bill Kelly of Chess Games. Now the game we're highlighting now is ILD Detective. If you play this week, you're gonna be automatically entered to win a free registration to either Chess 2021 in October or Chess Italy in February of 2022. And the top score between now and Thursday midnight will get a $100 gift card to the Chess store. Now to show you how it's done, Show you how easy it is and fun. We've brought in a pro uh, for you to play with, uh, Dr. Stephen Nathan from the Innova Advanced Lung Disease Center. Stephen, welcome. Well, thank you very much. You know, it's always been a lifelong ambition to be on a game show. It's my one chance to, to break it open. This is, this is how you get started, I think. And thanks for taking time out of your busy day uh, to share some of your uh, expertise. Steve's a great guy. Uh, many of you know him. He's, uh, he's really brilliant. And again, that accent makes him see, seem even smarter as we go through these questions. So, Christine, let's pull up ILD Detective. Great faculty on this case. If you have a great game idea, send it to games at chestnut.org. We're always looking for him. And in fact, this player hub is open 24 hours a day. You should check it out this week. There's about 10 different games you can challenge yourself with and improve your pulmonary knowledge. Okay, we'll see. I hope you, I, I'll probably get all the answers wrong and then someone's <laughs> gonna rescind my pulmonary boards or something like that. <laughs> all right, Steve, so 42 years old, African-American, smoker, progressive dyspnea, non-predictive cough, mostly with exertion, does have a gastroesophageal reflux, fatigue, no myalgias, some sicka symptoms, uh, no joint problems, and no, let's see, no Renaud's, skin rashes, alopecia, maybe some mold exposure. All right, Steve, when you hear about some of these, what do you think? How about these exposures in particular? Anything uh, come to mind? Well, as soon as you mentioned mold, you're thinking about some kind of hypersensitivity pneumonitis as a cause of a dyspnea, either subacute or uh, chronic hypersensitivity, cigarettes, um, you know, risk factor for many different things. Uh, she seems a little bit young for emphysema. Uh, she could have some hyperreactive airways potentially. Also risk factor for IPF, but she's very young uh, female. It would be very unlikely to be IPF. So it does have some some crackles. Tenderness over the, over the joints. Steve, I don't know if you want to comment on extra thoracic manifestations on physical exam. I know you see a lot of different cases. Well, sure, you know, I think that I'd be very suspicious of an underlying connective tissue disease. I was suspicious already based on the sicker symptoms and now she has tenderness over her joints. So I'd be even more suspicious. Uh, and she, you know, is a youngish African-American female. So that would, that a priori jumps up in terms of what my differential is gonna end up being is some kind of connective tissue disease related interstitial lung disease. We haven't heard about the chest X-ray or CT yet, but she is short of breath. And that's what I'd be suspicious of. Sounds like a significant restriction and, and uh, mild diffusion impairment. And the radiology is calling it non, non-specific interstitial pneumonia pattern, which is an unusual pattern to, to call on, on, on chest CT. Certainly doesn't look like a UIP pattern. From what I'm seeing, if we look at what the ATS-ERS um, guidelines say, this would be alternate diagnosis suggested. This is not a UIP pattern from what I can see so far. There is mention of traction which you can see with a, a UIP pattern or probable UIP pattern, but I'm really not seeing traction in these images. So leading away from uh, IPF. All right, serology is Christina, let's see. Uh, Steve, in terms of ANAs, we, we draw a lot of them, sometimes a false positive. Do you have a, a personal approach to ANAs in terms of patterns or, or a number? Uh, well, this ANA is, is positive. It's um, not you know one in 1280 but 320 is significant and it's accompanied by a positive ssa and ssb which going with her uh, sicker like symptoms would be consistent with something like sjogren's or possibly a mixed connective tissue disease with uh, sjogren like features um so and certainly you can get bronchiectatic changes with sjogren's as well so the picture's starting to come together a little bit you know i know pathology is next but Steve, at, at you know, what point, at this point, would you pursue a tissue diagnosis or go with what you have clinically? I know you have a great philosophy about this. I do, you'll have to remind me what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I think she has an underlying connective tissue disease and typically we don't biopsy these patients. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily get tissue in, in this particular case. Sounds good. Let's see if it's provided for us, Christina. 
So I was wrong. Tissue was obtained. Do I get dinged for that? Do I get minus <laughs> points for that? It looks like uh, it looks like an NSIP pattern from what I can see, and probably mixed cellular and fibrotic pattern, which is the most usual pattern we see in underlying connective tissue diseases. Most likely on your list. Still sticking with number one there? I'll stick with number one. So the exposures um, for or against? The exposures are against a CTD ILD. So kind of a distractor, I will say no. Yeah. Exposures go for chronic uh, HP, like Steve said. That can look like pulmonary fibrosis at the end. All right, so we'll take that. Um, sure, she's a smoker. IPEF, interstitial pneumonitis with autoimmune features. I think she's a little bit beyond that. She doesn't just, she has symptoms and signs of a connective tissue disease. So um, I, would, I would say this is still CTD ILD. I'm not sure exactly based on our rheumatologic colleagues uh, criteria for which CTD she exactly fits in, but she's got the joint thing going on, she's got the sicker going on. I think this is more than IPAF or IPF with autoimmune features. And certainly she's uh, too young, wrong demographic for IPF. Okay, perfect. You did pick up that joint tenderness, right? So that could fit with uh, connective tissue disease, good. Right. Um, probably not chronic, HP, base of the rails. There's nothing other than the mold exposure to suggest chronic HP. Although with chronic HP, you can get a NSIP pattern, but it wasn't particularly bronchocentric. Uh, sometimes you'll see poorly formed granulomas. We didn't see any of that. So um, as much as you want to steer me away from my answer, I'm, I'm going to stick to my answer. I need that return ticket from Italy. He's not buying a Christina. I will uh, cancel this one out. All right, Steve, so very good. So we're back with our four leading or proposed diagnoses. And I think you built a pretty strong case. We're going to go with CTILD. CTILD is my final answer. All right, Dr. Nathan has placed his bet, and let's go for it. All right, all right, Dr. Nathan, rock. congratulations. <laughs> and uh, you do need to come to Italy, and you've just won dinner. Once you get there, dinner's on me. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> And uh, Steve, any advice for people uh, either playing an ILD game or preparing for their boards or um, when they're confronted with uh, uh, these challenging patients in real life before we let you go? I think that, uh, you know, especially with ILD, the history is key. Take a good history. It's going to steer in the right direction 90% of the time. And then, you know, with the demographics, as was evident in this case, uh, ILD is a fun area, really, because it's not uh, it's not cookie cutter. Every case can be very different. Sometimes it's clearly black or white, uh, but a lot of times it's a, it's a gray zone, and you've got to figure it out. And I think that's what makes it fun. So for all of you, when you come across those ILD cases, have fun with it, and hopefully steer the patient in the right direction. Well, Steve, thanks so much. I know before the break we were talking about the importance of having a, a multidisciplinary conference, just like we do for our lung cancers. Correct. Absolutely. I think the multidisciplinary discussion is key. And um, I think it's opportunity to engage with your peers, um, other pulmonologists and discuss the case. And sometimes when you hear other people's opinion, your diagnosis can evolve. And that's the value of the multidisciplinary discussion. Well, Dr. Nathan, thanks uh, for your presentation for the 2021 CHEST Congress. We really appreciated it earlier. Uh, Thanks for playing this game with us, and thanks for your help with some of my patients over the years. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Steve Nathan, a great ILD detective. You check out the game this week and be eligible for prizes. And now, back to our conference. Thank you, Bill.